my work on inequality is uh, at the global scale. So what we've been trying to do is to create a reasonably reliable comparative picture across the entire world, something which is very difficult to do with survey data because surveys are sporadic. It's very difficult to do with tax data, which has been very fashionable lately because income taxes only exist in a relative handful of countries. So we've been using industrial data and geographic data, data that is collected for administrative purposes, to construct a large data sets uh, that go back to the early 60s and that cover about 150 countries fairly consistently. And that enables us to say things about the movement of inequality across the whole surface of the of the planet. What you find is that the way in which the global financial system is governed or misgoverned has a very important effect on the movement of inequality uh, in most countries of the world. We find, for example, that in most countries, there's a very clear relationship between the exchange rate and the movement of inequality. The exchange rate depreciates, inequality goes up. There are very simple, straightforward reasons why that should be the case. It turns out in a good, consistent data set, you can show that it is, in fact, the case. There is a certain asymmetry in the world. What happens in New York and London has a bearing on the entire world. What we find, though, of course, from a policy standpoint, is that if you are in, let's say, Latin America, or if you're in uh, Southeast Asia, or, uh, if you're in Africa, you are going to be much more exposed to external forces over which you don't have control, unless you gain, in some sense, a measure of control over the way in which world finance is governed. The key policy message uh, from our work on inequality is that global finance matters a great deal. Uh, the structure of global finance is extremely important for most countries in the world in affecting how their internal structures of wage and income inequality uh, move over time. Large countries can control capital flows. This is something that China has done, uh, that India has done for decades. Smaller countries have to band together uh, and they have to form uh, financial systems which are resilient to the uh, movement of global, to the uh, predations, if you like, of global finance. Mm -hmm.